Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Well, we got a couple little stakes uh, going there. We got the rocket stove up under here, flaming pretty good, looking real nice. And we got it out of the bucket to keep it safe. Got a new prop over here, seven more inches, I believe. I'll measure it again, it's drying right there. That's Jonathan's ride home. We got this up here, there's no wind hardly at all. I'm gonna put this other prop up on there and I'm gonna take this rotor and I'm gonna put that on there with the uh, longer prop. I'm gonna slow it down, I'm gonna put it in star and see if it's got enough power to keep generating and not stall out. Yeah, just an experiment. Another prop that me and Jonathan made and one more at the house just like it. These are fixed to get sent off. I'm glad spring is here, nice warm days. Don't know if I showed you this on the other video I made a few days ago. Actually, it's been about five days and I still ain't finished editing it. But this is the new jig for that longer prop. Works real good. Leans forward, stays like that. And that, you can see where the pulley, the pulley rides right up, right up along. You can see the marking from it. And that tilts the table instead of that, that cable right here. I got that tied out of the way. That also means I can take the table completely out of the framework here. Alrighty, so anyway, I'm going to get after it. I'm going to put the other rotor, put that rotor on there. And I've got to drill a hole in that prop and finish putting it up here after we get done painting it. And I got something pretty special that I'm going to use. Oh yeah, I can see the blood coming to the surface on that. Cooking nice. Might move them out to the outer edges. That's just a piece of drywall metal frame and stud. Not drywall. And I, you can see how I cut it. I'm going to turn the camera sideways because it's easier for me. Look at that flame come out. Mm -mm -mm. And anyway, I just cut the corners and gave it a good bend. Put that little grill on top. Yeah, where is it? There it is. Flex seal, bright, and this one's white. So I'm going to make it white. I can't see my prop at night being red. This is going to make it a lot easier to see. But I'm pretty sure once I put that other prop up on there, I'm really going to need a furling mechanism when it gets above 40 mile an hour or 50. I think it has the ability to blow the stator. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. Great helper. Anyway, I'm going to get to work, show you a little bit as I get done. Got a lot to do, so I'm not going to make much video. Anyway, I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind and other home energies. Oh yeah, right there. That little uh, container up there is full of some old bolts and stuff. And it's got the LED on it so it don't blow off. And these night lights right here, which are made of lawn lamps, with a bunch of holes cut for the lawn lamps to set in the piece of 2x4. These blew off twice. Wrecked a few of them. I got a few of them super glued together and about four more to uh, repair and put back up there. You'll notice uh, I just sprayed that flex seal on here. It isn't an even shine. It goes on real thick and kind of lumpy. You can see that right across here. But that's alright. It's pretty thick. Golf ball's got divots to help it slide through the air a little easier. Maybe it's not going to hurt anything as long as it's smooth. Anyway, front side's done. We'll flip it over and get the sides and the bottom of this afterward. Looking pretty good. At least it goes on real thick. I'm pretty sure it'll last a while. Well, there's a little better look at uh, how ripply it is. Orange peel is what they call this. But anyway, I tried to spray it on as light as I could. Actually, it would come out in big drops. So, it's pretty thick on there. And I'm going to do the back side. Sure you can see. <laughs> and I touched it. Where did I touch it? Oh yeah, I touched it right there. It's pretty wet. It looks dry, but it is. doesn't have much shine. Well, there we are. Nice sunset. You missed the best part of it. Anyway, got the prop off. I've got the other magnet rotor up there. And, and the stakes uh, got turned a little late. A little bit of char on them. That's all right. Moved them to the outside. Because there's still a nice flame going on under there. I smelt it up on the roof. I said, Jonathan, turn the stakes. <laughs> so we're fixing the chow down. Mmm. Beautiful. Yeah, gotta love it. Gonna drill a hole in the other prop, paint the other side of it, stick it up there on the machine. Hopefully if I got some low winds, I'll still have, be able to make some electricity. The stator up there was wired in star, but it only had one magnet rotor on it. Now we're adding the second magnet rotor. I'm gonna have three times the power. A little less RPMs, but I think it's gonna equal out because the thing was stalling out real bad before. If not, I got some blades from Jeff at Missouri Wind and Solar. Got some Falcon blades. Yeah, I'm gonna try those on there. And I got a set of Raptor blades to try out. Yeah, we'll get back at you as soon as things develop. I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. I'm going to eat.
Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. I'm looking down the pole here, now I'm looking at it, it kind of goes up like this, and then it wants to bend off this way. So I line up straight up and down with that pole. I can see this thing has been bent. That's what I was talking about in the last videos. This isn't up very high up here. I think the pole is exactly six foot up from where I'm standing on the roof. That's a little bit much for this so uh, conduit here. Thing is, we had some high gusts and some high winds. I saw one gust of 60 miles an hour. That's probably the one that done it or the ones I saw around 50. And with a four foot, nine inch prop up here on this thing, that was enough to bend this pole. Seriously, people, I've tried to turn this thing out that way and then pull in so if I fell, I'd fall on the roof. I got it to move a little bit. I'm going to do it a little bit more and get this thing straight to let you know why I say you need a furling mechanism. Holding a piece of plywood up flat to the wind is not very good. Especially if you put it on a pole, it can fall and hurt things. So, just something to think about. I'm going to get back up here. Right now, we have the prop off of this, and I added the second magnet rotor. It's wired in star. Over here, we have Mr. Jonathan Haywood. Which was that? 73 and 3 quarter? Yeah, 73 and 3 quarter inch prop here. We're going to put that on here. It's going to make it spin a little slower and take care of that problem I had before with it uh, getting to charging voltage before it caught lift or cut in speed. Anyway, uh, we carved that prop together. Well, we got the prop on finished up. I'm sorry, it's nighttime. I got that LED up on the roof and six foot up. We're looking at the wind turbine. We see the uh, the top of the blade up there, which is up about another three foot, so it's all there. Not too bad. Wind is completely still. I did get a few readings. It was charging in the low wind, starting about five, putting a few milliamps, then creeping up very quickly. Ah, can't wait till the wind tomorrow. We'll show you what we got going. I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind, and other home energies. And many good things to you and yours. Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind, and other home energies. Looks like we got it pretty straight. I used ratchet straps to get it up there. The wind's just cruising along nice and slow. It's a 73 and 3 quarter inch blade on it. It slowed the RPMs down. Well, I was right that we were getting charging voltage one third quicker than we should have. That was taken from the data I got off the other blade before. Yeah, we haven't had that high a wind today. I've seen it get up around 25 or so. Saw about 10 amps come out of it and a little bit more. Looking pretty good. Got a few more meters set up. It's balancing real nice. One side of the blade was a little light, so woo, there's a nice little breeze. The flex seal is pretty heavy and goes on pretty thick, so I painted the light side and it actually worked out real nice. A lot quieter, a lot smoother, starts up easy, gets the charging voltage, everything is spot on. I'm quite happy with it. I'd like to see a little bit more amps out of it, but I think having 14 gauge wire run down the pole to the battery and charge controller uh, is quite a distance. It kind of doubles the uh, ohms that come from the stator and all the way to the battery. So that means I'm gonna get half the amperage I would if I had everything up close to it. So I'm gonna to try to go to, uh, yeah, hello. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna to go to uh, some 12 gauge or some 10 gauge wire and that ought to straighten it out a little bit. I'm liking it. It definitely needs a furling mechanism. I've watched this pole bend almost as far as it did uh, before it started bending the other night in these lower winds. So anyway, it sure looks pretty with that white prop up there. I can see it from the road. Right there in the center of the screen is a bucket with a 3 watt LED on it. I can see it down the highway with that. Works real nice. We've been seeing gusts of about 25. Uh, definitely going to need a furling mechanism. Blade is about one third longer than the, old, than the other ones, which it dub pretty much doubles the uh, power. The power that it took to bend the pole before. Cruising along pretty quiet there, waiting for a gust uh, so you can see what happens with it. Nicely rounded tips, nice and quiet. I didn't mount it exactly straight. The blades track within about an inch of each other, so it's about a half inch off. It doesn't seem to affect it much. I'm quite happy with it. Come on, wind. I'll be back when the wind picks up to about a 25 mile an hour gust or something. And we'll take a look at her then and watch it spin. Well, as you see that light bulb here in the center of the screen, that's a dump load on. Been on, that thing stayed on for about a minute. But you see, this thing ain't moving very fast. It's just cranking amps. The torque on the blade doesn't have to go up to high RPMs. It just means it's not going to slow down when it starts drawing amps. So there we go. Saw a good wind out here. It's what drew me out here. Yeah, here's what I wanted to show you a little earlier. Really not heavy winds, but you can listen to that sucker. You can hear a whine. It's 
especially when the wind kicks up a little bit. That's the magnets passing the coils. This one's a whole lot quieter on the prop. I rounded the tips properly. Notice you just don't hear an awful lot. Even with the bigger blades, doesn't have a problem with tracking. It does pretty good. Sorry it's nighttime and a light video and all, but that's one LED shining up on it. You can see it from the road pretty good. I'm kind of happy with it. Right up here in the ceiling, ah, there's a nice little chandelier type deal. We're going to have five 50 watt bulbs in there. That'll make a, uh, a 250 watt dump load and probably keep the other one over there as well. One goes out, we'll know it, and we can always screw in another one. But anyway... That'll uh, be a total of 300 watts. And there goes the dump load again. Not that bad. Pretty easy night. I'm having fun. Thing is, even at these low winds, looking at uh, three, four, fives, it's jumping up and down. There's four amps, three amps. Little mild winds out there. Not all that bad. Now we're less than an amp. Now she kick it up. There's one. I've been seeing eight and nine amp off and on. It's all day and all night. There's, uh, <laughs> it looked like seven, but I think it was a one. There we go. There's four. Watch this little meter over here that gets up to about three. This one down here doesn't react. That first mark on the left is five. So it doesn't show any amps until this thing gets past four amps on the other one. So at least I get a continuous scale. There's probably about four. Turn back off again. And it runs all the way up to 30 amps. So I'm kind of anxious to watch that thing kick in some decent wind. There's five amps and it's dropping down to about four, five, six. Back down five, so at least I know it works and I got my money's worth. Then we're going to have the uh, voltage over here. The tachometer is mounted. Yeah, I drilled holes in the corners to help my cuts. Yeah, they show. I don't care. It's my shop. Then over here, I'm going to have the anemometer. And that's basically a one screw mount. I got to get the wire and I got to find a spot on the wall where I figure it's handy. So, yeah, I was figuring maybe right up over there. Then I got to move all my junk out of the way as well. But, that sounds like a pretty decent spot. And then I'll have the batteries, which it's sitting on right here. The way I have it right now is, I have a 2x4. Two screws in the front. And it's just sitting on top of the batteries in front. Yeah, so we're going to stick it up here. And I'm going to straighten up all this wire mess. I was thinking over here. But this is pretty much the end of my shelf over here. And not just too many things hanging over here. Anyway, we're having fun. Well, it's an update. I'm Scott Brown. Green wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Here we go. Listen to the wine. Much quieter. Larger blade, one-third RPMs. Rounding the corners off a little bit better. She likes it a lot better. When the wind kicks and picks up, it delivers it into amps. It doesn't have to have them high winds like we had that bent the pole. But if those winds come again, that pole will bend real, real far. So the furling mechanism is still needed. I'll listen to it. What a difference. You'll hear the wind kick up and watch this light get even brighter. I watched it. It, it. it goes at a normal brightness and all of a sudden the wind kicks up and that thing gets even brighter. Yep, back on again. Not bad. There we go. I don't have much battery. I wind up having to go home here pretty quick. Got plenty of battery down here. I didn't bring the charger though. So here's the low down. Somewhere around four, four and a half miles an hour, the blades start to budge. Then I watch it drop down, they stay. Then they'll, the wind will start to pick back up. At four and a half miles per hour, I saw it, uh, the blades actually reach cut in speed. And 5.2 miles per hour, she hit 12.5 volts. Eh, or somewhere real close there. It was kind of quick, didn't catch it, but it was definitely charging voltage at about five. Uh, 5.2 to 5.5 and as the wind picks up it just keeps dropping amps into the battery so it's not really spinning hard or fast it just got a lot of area of wind collection uh, called the wind swept area anyway just thought I'd show you Let's see if the, I feel wind picking up I'd like to show you the dump load getting brighter <laughs> meaning the batteries are going up instead of down I need more dump load that's for sure there we go oh look at it now she's bright and got just a little bit brighter. Seemed like the camera filtered it out. And now she's going back down to normal. There we go. <laughs> I'm loving it. Anyway, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Keep smiling and have a ball. God bless. And there's going to be the new dump load right in the middle of the room where I want it.
Five light bulbs, 12 volts. One goes out, all right, we'll unscrew it, throw another one in. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, we'll have six all together, that'll make uh, 300 watts of a dump load. No problem. I was really wanting one of those uh, light bars, you know, where it's got a whole bunch of uh, sockets in it all in a row. You usually see them in bathrooms and boutiques. That's what I want. Yeah, put a few of those in, put some light bulbs in. 12 volt light bulbs, that is. I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Thank you.